Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone that is leading us in worship today, I welcome you. We are so glad that you're joining with us today in online worship, and I want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form, particularly if it's your first time to join with us in online worship. Use that contact form. The link to that is pinned in the comment section. It's also in the header of this uh, Facebook feed, and this is a way that we can be in contact with you, that we can come up alongside you, that we can help you grow in your faith, that we can send you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about what's going on with Douglas Avenue, all the ways to grow in faith and in service. And on that contact form is a place for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we want to encourage you to use that contact form today. Uh, we are continuing in our series, Stories to Live By. We have a special guest preacher today, Reverend Curtis Brown. We'll be talking about him shortly. But we also, uh, when we come together for our online worship, make sure that we covenant together to be a blessing and to participate fully. And what that means is we're going to promise to participate fully in what's going on in worship because this isn't just this random video that you've happened upon today. This is worship of God and worship with one another. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to really focus in on what we're doing, to sing the songs and pray when we're praying and really pay attention. So we covenant together to participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that in the way that we're in the, contact, the um, comment section together, the way we may be gathered with other people, as we're in this worship experience, the way that we're into the community and send all of this out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone involved. Again, we are so glad that you've joined with us for worship, and here we go with our call to worship. Hi, we're the Clouds. I'm Grant. I'm Macy. I'm Paisley. I'm Marie. Please join us in the call to worship. Your line is, Holy God, you invite us to worship you. Let's practice saying that together now. Holy God, you invite us to worship you. In your holy presence, we discover unlimited love. Holy God, you invite us to worship you. In your, in your holy presence, we discover forgiveness. Holy God, you invite us to worship you. In your holy presence, we discover empowerment. Holy God, you invite us to worship you. In your holy presence, we discover purpose in your name. Holy God, you invite us to worship you. Please join us in singing Courageous. We were made to be courageous. We were made to lead the way.
Hello, I'm Frank Trumpeter. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church who plays saxophone in the praise band and I sing in the chancel choir. Loving God, we come together in worship today seeking to abide in your presence. Open our minds to your spirit of wisdom that we may know how to live as your people. Open our hearts to your spirit of truth that we may love all your people with a love that shows your justice, kindness, and radical grace. May this time of worship be authentic and pleasing to you. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Nancy Gillespie, longtime member here at Douglas. Uh, I'm here for bell practice tonight. It's wonderful. I'm also in the singing choir. Looking forward to that starting up. And I want to say peace be with you. Hi, I'm Abigail Klein, member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Julie Crable, and I'm on the Staff Parish Committee and on the bell, in the Bell Choir. Peace be with you. Yay! It's time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your screen, to your device, so that you can see everything that goes on with small talk. This wonderful time is led by Miss Laurie, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for small talk. Hello everybody, I am Miss Lori, and this is Lodge, the lamb, and his helper, Cohen. You can probably hear Luna in the background there. So today, we made some pumpkin bread this morning, and it was delicious. What? You didn't get any. I know you didn't get any, because it I, we don't give pumpkin bread to sheep. Honestly, Lodge. I mean, Luna, Luna can have it, but... No, no pumpkin but bread for sheep. Oh. We're supposed to act justly. There's no good reason that Laud can't have some pumpkin bread, right? Right, okay, I'll give you some pumpkin bread instead of the paper. Okay, so we're gonna act justly, and we're gonna give this little sheep here, how about just a little piece over here, some pumpkin bread. Oh, yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy. Very good. Now, oh, Lord, there's other people that are here now. There's, there's Uncle Mike and there's Luna. Oh, love and mercy. Should we take mercy on them and maybe give them some pumpkin bread? I think we should. Luna, oh, Uncle Mike, here. And you know what, Uncle Mike? Awesome. Oh, and Luna. Thank you. Yeah, I make the best pumpkin bread in the whole world. Did you know that? I make, I do, I make, Did I not make the that. best pumpkin Walk humbly. Perhaps I don't make the best pumpkin bread in the whole world. But it's good. Mm, it's good. But I'm not the best. I probably shouldn't go around saying I'm the best. Clearly, Pillsbury might be the best. So remember these things, guys. In your everyday lives, we're going to act justly. You want to hold that one there, Claude? Love and mercy and walk humbly. And have a great day. Love you. See you later. Good morning. I'm Sydney Young. I've been a member at Douglas for over 45 years. I'm also a member of the Zephyr Sunday School class and Elizabeth Circle. And I participate in the Tuesday morning Bible study group. 
Today's reading from the Bible is Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. We've been enjoying such a wonderful summer of worship together, celebrating stories to live by. Those verses and stories from the Bible that are particularly helpful or meaningful to our various preachers who've been leading us in worship through this season. Today, I am delighted to welcome the Reverend Dr. Curtis Brown as our preacher. Curtis is no stranger to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. He works with the youth group. He's a regular greeter for in-person worship. And yes, he is also my beloved husband of 26 years. Curtis is an elder in the United Methodist Church and has served in local church ministries and in annual conferences and national denominational leadership all across the United States, from New England to the Pacific Northwest and every place in between. Curtis's current day job is serving as the Director of Connectional Ministries for the Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church. In this role, he facilitates mission and ministries of United Methodist churches when they collaborate together all across Illinois from camping to disaster response to starting new churches. He is in all of that. He's pretty excited about publishing his new book this past June entitled Ready, Set, Plant. That's available through Cokesbury. I got to do the plug. Uh, but he may have been even more excited when he got to fulfill a lifelong dream in July when we as a family got to visit Chaco Canyon in New Mexico, part of his ongoing learning and passion for Native American archaeological and sacred sites. I could go on, but I'm just going to stop. I love the guy. Here is Reverend Curtis Brown. When I first became a Christian, I was fascinated with the idea what do Christians do? Uh, I was a teenager at the time. I'd gotten involved in the youth group at my local United Methodist Church. In that congregation, I found people who loved me and cared for me. And they invited me to understand God and understand that that God had inspired them to love this way. So I gave it a try. And with their help, I came to know the love and acceptance of Jesus Christ for myself. I came to believe not just that God loved the world in some sort of abstract, generalized way, but that God loved me, me with all of my insecurities, faults, troubles. It was amazing, and I remember at the time writing in my journal that it was like I'd gone from living in black and white to living in color. Well, I mean, for the young people, uh, let me explain. So it used to be that television only came in black and white without any colors. Well, maybe I have to explain this too. You know the videos that you watch on your phone? Well, they used to be sent over radio waves to a giant wooden box with a screen in it. We'd all gather around to watch it together, one show at a time, and we called it television. Anyways, it was amazing. I began to live this Christian life. I began to live differently because of the deep joy of Christ's love for me. But I wasn't really sure what kind of life that was supposed to be. What did Christians do? As a student, I had always appreciated when a teacher would provide a very specific syllabus that included all of their expectations, all of the assignments, all of the deadlines, everything. This helped me understand where we were going together throughout the course and it helped calm my anxiety about what might be coming up next. A syllabus made clear what it was I was supposed to do. 
And whenever I started to worry about what was next or I worried about the course, I could refer to the syllabus and make a plan for the next steps. I wanted a, a similar syllabus for Christian living. What was I to do? I'd grown up in a church and in a Christian home, so it wasn't like I was studying some sort of alien culture or something. I had more than a passing acquaintance with the ways that most Christians lived. But being a young man, I wasn't too keen on simply accepting that the way that I saw people who claimed to be Christians live was in fact how Christians are supposed to live. I was looking for some guidance, some theoretical grounding in which to root my observations and which I could apply to novel situations. It's into this personal quest for a practical and practicable pragmatic Christian ethic that the prophet Micah showed up in my life. The book of Micah is a pretty short book in the Hebrew scriptures. It record, records the words and saying of the prophet Micah who lived in the kingdom of Judah around 700 BCE, so about 2,700 years ago. Micah lived in a time when invading armies from the Assyrian Empire frequently threatened Judah. And the people lived under direct or indirect control of the Assyrians throughout his entire lifetime. In chapter 6 of the book of Micah, the prophet employs this uh, rhetorical device where God is bringing a legal complaint against the people of Judah for not living up to God's expectations and not honoring God's covenant. In response, the prophet has a metaphorical defense attorney reply to God's charge with verse 6 and 7, which ask what God wants the people to do in order to honor and uphold God's covenantal agreement. It says in verse 6, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. All very melodramatic. And then in verse 8, Micah replies with this summation of what God expects the people to do. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with your God. Upon reading this threefold instruction from Micah 6 8, it almost immediately became one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Here's what I was looking for a short and simple list of what God wanted me to do, a practical framework for Christian living, a way of understanding how I was supposed to act in a wide variety of situations and a lens through which to see my way through tricky and conflicting ethical dilemmas. I love the active imperative tense of the whole verse. It wasn't just about what I was supposed to think or feel or an attitude or approach. It was about what I was supposed to do. Although Micah 6.8 is relatively simple, it's not simplistic. It's threefold instructions actually talk and touch on three of the major themes in Hebrew scripture, three of the key ideas in Jesus' teaching, and three long discussed principles of Christian ethics. The first of these, do justice. This is actually the word shalom that we interpret here as justice, and it can be interpreted as peace, but it more specifically means peace with justice. Shalom. Do shalom. As Christians, we are to do justice. Not just wait for justice or hope for justice, but to actually live justly and seek justice for everyone. There's been a lot of disparaging by some politicians of young people as social justice warriors and justice activists, as if that's a bad thing. Personally, I'm happy that... Uh, 
young people are joining in this task that for over two and a half thousand years, Jews and Christians have been instructed to actively do, do justice. It's not always easy to live justly because our society isn't always just. Sometimes it means taking on uncomfortable topics like racism or wealth disparity. Sometimes it means treating someone fairly even when we don't want to. And sometimes it means owning up to some privileges or advantages that we've personally received, but that might have been denied to others and have kept us all from fairly competing. The first, do justice. The second is love kindness. This is another great idea from the Hebrew Bible. The word in Hebrew here is hesed. Uh, this is a word that we often translate as loving kindness, or uh, in its old-fashioned term and sense, it might be compared to the word charity, acts of caring and love that are done for others. There is a parallel tense set uh, in this verse as well, and we might translate this not just as love kindness, but as do has said, do loving kindness, similar to the previous instruction to do shalom. This is not a general command just to be nice to people, although that's certainly included. And being nice, being straight up old fashioned kind, we could use a lot more of that. Instead, this means for us to try to help others while respecting, relating and loving them. It's not a paternalistic sense of just giving people stuff as they need it and expecting that they're going to conform to your ideas about what their lives should be out of gratitude. Uh, it's much, much more relational than that. We may be moved to acts of generosity or mercy out of our own sense that it meets our need to feel good about our actions or for some folks to celebrate ourselves. That's not what this is about either. Instead, hesed, loving kindness, is rooted in our actual knowledge and care for other people and entering into a mutual relationship where we share with one another, understand each other's needs and hopes and dreams, and commit in a collaborative way to seek those out together. This loving kindness can be a tough habit. I'll admit, I don't always approach other drivers trying to merge onto I-55 with as much love or kindness as I think God wants. But I know that it's God's loving kindness for me that is exemplified in Jesus Christ's salvation. And if God can love me, then I can surely love other people. Do justice. Love kindness. Walk humbly with your God. I'll confess that humility has never been one of my strongest virtues. So I haven't always known how to approach this last instruction. A different way of translating this might be that we are to walk prudently or walk carefully with God. Because God loves us, it's sometimes too easy for us to forget the almighty holiness and awesome power of God. As we walk with God, we should take care that we keep ourselves to high standards, especially those of justice and kindness. There's a great scene in C.S. Lewis's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, in which one of the children, Susan, uh, who's fallen into this magical world ruled by a benevolent Christ-like lion named Aslan, she asks, is he quite safe? I should feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Her host, Mr. Beaver, replies, safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. Walking humbly, prudently, carefully with God is a lot like this. God is good, but that doesn't always mean that walking with God is safe and comfortable. In my experience, walking with God has led me more often out of my comfort zone than into a place of safety. 
A little over 156 years ago, when he was a young person of about 22 years old, the philosopher and theologian Soren Kierkegaard wrote in his journal, what I really lack is to be clear in my mind what I am to do. Not what I am to know, except in so far as understanding must precede every action. The thing is to understand myself, to see what God really wishes me to do. The thing is to find a truth which is really true for me, to find the idea for which I can live and die. As Christians, what words can we live by? What is the truth around which we can live and die? What is it that God wants? What are we to do? For me, that answer is in the Bible, in Micah 6, 8. What are we to do? Do justice. Do kindness. Do walk humbly with God. Amen. Please join us in singing, What Does the Lord Require of You? My name is Cindy Arnold, and I am a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also a member of the Young Adult Sunday School class, and I work in the community garden as well. Between Sundays, I am a math teacher at Lincoln Community High School, so welcome to my classroom. Would you pray with me today? Good morning, Lord. Life feels a little chaotic lately maybe more than a little even. Like it's full of what could be contradictions. We come to you today with hearts grateful for your love and grace, for beautiful sunsets and for the opportunity to worship you with our community. But our hearts are heavy too. Heavy with the weight of violence and hurting in places like Afghanistan and Haiti. Heavy from the weight of the way the COVID virus is still plaguing our world. Lord, in these feelings that seem to contradict each other, we seek you out. And we are grateful that you are there each and every time we do. Let us know your presence in both our gratitude and our grief. And let us see you bring healing and comfort to individuals everywhere. Let us know, Lord, the way that your spirit is moving each of us to act, the way that we can work with you to bring your love and healing to the world. 
Help us see how our lives can embody justice, mercy, and humility in each of our interactions. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to be a part of your plan. Now would you please give us the courage to actually do it. Lord, we seek you with familiar words in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Thank you so much for your dedicated support of the missions of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Despite the fact that we are still working to emerge from this pandemic, the ministries of the church don't end, and we are entering a new season of expansion to two worship services in addition to more ministry options. As we move to two worship services, our church will need more greeters. Curtis Brown will be heading this up, and on-the-job training will be provided. If you would like to help with this important hospitality function, please contact the church office. Natural and man-made disasters, including weather, wars, and refugees, require not only prayer, but our action. That's where UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, steps in. To help provide the sort resources that UMCOR needs during these troubling times, we are asking for your special contributions to help this vital ministry. You can give using the online giving portal or by sending a check to the church office with UMCOR marked clearly in the memo line. Our fall ministry kickoff will be Sunday, September 12th. On this day, we'll be adding Children's Church to the 1030 worship service. Kids through elementary school will remain in the sanctuary through small talk and then go to Children's Church with Miss Lori and Laud. On that day, there will also be a kickoff party for our junior senior high youth. Be watching The Courier and E! News for details. September will be a busy month for Wouldn't It Be Lovely with their fifth annual golf outing and their little black dress gala. Because of the pandemic, the associates have been limited on their in-person sales, so let's step up and provide the financial support that they need. Also, watch for details on the next fabulous showcase sale coming up in October. And it won't be long before the kids of Cl Club Compass return to the DAUMC campus. Compass has many ways in which you can assist. If you would like to help out, please contact Molly Barrett or the church office. Our musical groups are getting back together. Wesley Ringer's handbells have already started and meet every Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. Chancel Choir will begin meeting every Thursday at 7 p.m. on September 9th. New musicians are always welcome. We want to help start the new school year right. For the next two weeks, we'll be praying for our students and educators in each worship service and blessing their backpacks and briefcases. If you are a student, teacher, or staff member at any level, I hope you will join us. The Community Garden Cleanup Day is scheduled for Saturday, September 11th, and on the 26th, we will be presenting new Bibles to the children and youth of the church. There are a lot of ministries, all made possible by your dedicated support. Remember, you can give through the online giving portal at the DAUMC website, through automatic bill pay with your bank, through ACH transfers using the church's bank, or by bringing or sending your check to the church. Now, let's sing as we move toward the end of worship. Please join us in singing, Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been such a joy to have this time with you, and we just pray that your whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful and has been helpful for you as you grow in your faith, and that you will join with us again very soon for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary. Beginning on Sunday, September 5th, we'll be having uh, worship in the sanctuary at 815 and again at 1030 a.m. So you're welcome to join us for those times as well. I again remind you that we love to pray with you, and so please use that contact form today so that your prayer requests can go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. That's such an important part of how it is that we are church family together. So please let us pray with you and connect with you. As you go into your day, go knowing that the God of mercy and justice is with you, that Jesus who loves you and calls you forward in that same justice and mercy is with you, and that the Holy Spirit is there to lead and guide and empower you each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.